We can't control the weather yet, but we can control how we store energy that it gives us. And while lithium batteries have done their very heavy lifting so far, they're not the only way to bottle up sunshine and wind. So here's a question. What if we stored renewable energy underground? This is a really interesting thing. I imagine a lot of people don't really know about it. Let's jump into it. Hello, folks. My name is Ben Alexander. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thousands of new subscribers over the last few days. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I uh, try really hard with my videos so that it's worth your time. So uh, please feel free to put your comments below and, and give some uh, thoughts on my videos if you'd like. So compressed air energy storage, otherwise known as CAES in an abbreviation. It isn't new. The first system was built back in Germany in 1978. But what's happening now is that it is finally getting closer to practical. And that is largely thanks to a Canadian company called Hydrostore, which has managed to solve the main problem that has held this technology technology back for you know 40 50 years heat loss here's the idea in simple terms when there is extra electricity from solar or wind that power runs a compressor which forces air into a sealed underground cavern usually a salt cave or an old mine or even a depleted uh, gas field when demand rises later the air is released through a turbine to generate electricity again you've got to give it to them it's quite simple it's actually pretty uh, an interesting thought, really. You just hope that nothing cracks, <laughs> and then a big, you know, big vent comes out of the earth. So it's uh, mechanically simple, it's clean, and it's surprisingly durable. Many of these systems can last 50 years plus with minimal degradation. It's just really the the compressor that will need to be serviced. But and, and I don't think it's going to be a little compressor like what we have in our garages or sheds. It'll be a big serious thing, obviously, if you've seen the pictures. But the big flaw used to be heat and. Uh, it still is obviously a thing to consider. When you compress air, it gets really hot and most systems just dump that heat away. And then when it's time to expand the air again, it's too cold and you either have to lose efficiency or have to burn uh, gas to reheat it. So that's what has made earlier designs uh, messy, partly fossil fuel dependent. It's a very, it's, you know, sort of a bit more complex than it needs to be. Hydrostore's approach fixes that. They capture the compression heat using a thermal energy storage system, basically storing the warmth in water, and then feed the heat back in during discharge. And it's called adiabatic compressed air energy storage, or A-CAES. And it means you can run the whole system with zero emissions. You know, that's the net effect, zero emissions. So efficiency. Right now, it's around 65 to 75%, depending on the site. That's not lithium-ion territory yet, which is more like 85 to 90%, something like that. But for long-duration storage, it's really good, actually. The real advantage is cost and scale. According to Bloomberg, NEF compressed air projects built between 2018-2024 average about 293 US dollars per kilowatt hour of capacity. Compare that with uh, lithium ion at roughly 304 US dollars per kilowatt hour and then that is only for uh, short four hour systems. The longer you make the lithium storage the more expensive it gets while compressed air actually gets cheaper the bigger you build it and that's why it's attracting serious attention. You can store power for 24 hours more at a fraction of the cost of chemical batteries. It's also built from standard parts, compressors, pipes, uh, turbines, things like that. All pulled from industries that already exist and have existed for many years. So it's relatively easy to scale. So that is the attraction to this technology. Right now, several large facilities are either running or under construction. A 300 megawatt plant in Yubai in China connected to the grid this year. Another 300 megawatt project in Fai Chang, I believe you say. Two 320 megawatt systems planned by Siemens and Karai Energy in Europe. So it's kind of, it's becoming a thing all over the, the planet. And Hydrostore's own flagship sites, uh, which is um, Silver City Energy Storage Center in Australia. That is a big one, 200 megawatts due in 2027. That should come online. And Willow Rock in California, which is 500 megawatt targeted at 2030, if my memory serves me correctly. Those are huge numbers, roughly the output of a mid-sized coal plant, but emission free. So it's obviously a really big deal. Hydrostore's smaller pilot plant in Ontario has already been running since 2019, proving the concept at 1.25 megawatts. It's small, but it works, and it has been very reliable, no issues at all. If they can scale this up 
and they seem to be on track, we could see a whole new category of long duration, low cost, practically zero emission energy storage rollout in the next five or 10 years. So lithium batteries will still handle quick, high power cycles, obviously, but compressed air could become the silent backbone storing renewable energy overnight or through cloudy windless days or something like that, even to just help the, the grid balance a little bit. And doing it without rare metals, fire risk, degradation, lots of money spent. So it's, that's a really good idea. It's not flashy. You'll never see one of these caverns in a showroom, obviously. Well, it's, it's obviously under the ground. But if we're serious about it, about renewable powered grids, this tech might quietly become one of the most important parts of the grid, kind of almost like a backbone or something like that. What do you think? Would you rather see governments invest in big underground holes <laughs> or caverns or underground storage projects like this, or keep expanding lithium ion facilities? Please let me know in the comments. Really interested to know what you're all thinking about this one because it is obviously a part of the future. Obviously, sodium is now here. That is definitely here. CATL are producing lots of sodium ion chemistry batteries in December, and it is now becoming a very big deal in the next few years. But I think so is this, actually. Compressed air batteries. It almost seems too simple. But uh, some of the simple technologies that we've had for years, even like in Scandinavia, Norway, you know, we have a lot of hydro storage, and uh, that works really, really well. De verke bra. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe and um, yeah, any comments, put them in the comments section below.